ऐसे डर थैंक यू वेरी मच स्पीकर I see the minister is no longer present here, but I wanted to concur with him on his uh, introductory remarks. Ah, Ms. Emirates is here. Good to see you. Because certainly this issue of the GST in principle is one that not only does the Congress Party support, but had initiated, as I said, in principle. I used to tell my European friends that you are. 29 sovereign countries and one common market. We are one sovereign country with 29 different common, uh, uncommon markets. So it's very good that we have created this in principle. Our problem, however, is with the way in which this government has implemented it, and this is why I join my colleague Adi Ranjan Chaudhary in saying we disapprove of this bill. Let me stress that the Jammu and Kashmir legislature has passed the GST bill when the opposition was not present in the assembly. This happened amid debates about the nature of the impact of GST on Jammu and Kashmir's relations with the centre, which, as you all know, is governed by Article 370, as the minister explained. And the opposition claimed that this was a violation of the Jammu and Kashmir Constitution and of Article 370 because it eroded the state's special status in terms of its own financial autonomy. And its legislative powers, which are reserved for the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly. Now, that's why our bill that we passed here says, except in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, throughout. Now, we all know the power of taxation is integral to the functioning of any government. Any changes made to such power will impact the functioning of a state. Now, the GST Act has a very serious further impact. In that it alters the relationship between the state of Jammu and Kashmir and the centre by impinging upon the power of the state to impose taxes. You are violating a fundamental power of that government. Now, they, the Jammu and Kashmir state, derives its power of taxation from the constitution of JNK, while the centre derives the same power from our constitution, Article 246. This is a very important distinction that the minister, despite being a lawyer, did not mention. By extending GST to Jammu and Kashmir, the centre gains effective control of the taxation in the state, and that was, of course, something reserved by the constitution to the state government. The powers of the GST Council are far-reaching. Jammu and Kashmir has not been guaranteed any protection that would be commensurate with its special status. That's why we saw widespread protests in the states, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The Umbrella Body for Trade, Commerce, and Industry, the Jammu and Kashmir Coordination Committee, opposed the bill for this reason. A state like JNK must be approached with sensitivity. We have not seen much sensitivity in this government's handling of Kashmir. The centre's indifference to the opposition, the opposition boycott, the opposition, the criticism of the trade body, the coordination body there. All of this was ignored, and it could signal future problems uh, that the the, the uh, Treasury benches should be paying attention to. The Chief Minister's act of seeking a special exemption for certain goods and services after the bill was passed is very peculiar. It should have been done certainly before the bill was passed. In fact, the opposition's confidence might have been built if the government itself was capable of recognizing that some exemptions were required. Now the state government passes the bill and then asks for exemptions. If the state government actually intended to secure these benefits or exemptions for the state, shouldn't it have deliberated upon these issues before the bill was passed? Should it not have asked for an amendment in the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly? These are important questions, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that this government has not addressed in the minister's opening remarks. The state has been dealing with conflict for a long time. And we must absolutely not subject it to any measures that could worsen its stability. GST has been moved by the government in extreme haste. You know that in Malaysia, when they introduced GST, they announced it and they gave the public and shopkeepers and so on one year before it was coming into force. In India, a much larger country than Malaysia, we didn't get one year; we got two weeks. This is what this government has done in haste. The GST network, which is the IT backbone of the GST system, is a shambles. When GST registrations began in June, there was massive confusion 
as businesses didn't quite know what to do. They tried to begin the process of migrating to the new system. They met technical glitches in the process. The OTPs were not working. The website crashed multiple times and the responses were delayed as a result by the government. Stories of system failures have been frequent. In fact, I think we all know even our own tax returns, and we are not under GST, have now been, we've been given five days more because their systems are failing. How can we impose a GST network on the country in this level of preparedness? It goes on to increase the insecurity of our economy that many people have already felt when we had the dramatic demonetization that affected so many people abruptly and that unsettled the economy. Now the center had promised to the nation a simplified system of taxation, a good and simple tax, the Prime Minister said, GST, good and simple tax, with the motto of one nation, one tax. But the GST is not one nation, one tax. It consists of three layers, CGST, IGST, and SGST. And it has six slabs of taxation, 0%, 3% for gold, 5%, 12%, 18%, 28%, and 40%. India's is the only GST system in the whole world to have so many slabs. So instead of one nation, one tax, we have one nation, three taxes, six slabs. That's not a slogan that will trip so comfortably off the tongue of our, uh, of our government propagandists. Let me say that it also has created massive confusion. You may remember that on the 1st of July when it came into force, many shops simply downed their shutters. They didn't even open for business. So they didn't know how to cope with what to do with the GST that had come in. In fact, this GST taxes different variations of the same product differently. So that, for example, milk. We all need milk, Mr. Deputy Speaker. You actually have four different rates for milk products. Flour. Generic flour is not taxed. You put a brand on a packet, immediately 5%. It's extraordinary. In fact, pastries, sweet biscuits and cakes are taxed at 6%. But if it has a chocolate covering, suddenly it comes to 12%. Now, I'm very curious about what the minister has against chocolate. But just maybe putting an icing of chocolate on the cake, you get an extra tax. This is, frankly, Mr. Deputy Speaker, this is irresponsibly complicated. It is far more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, and on top of that, these tax slabs are only announced just as the tax was being rolled out, which left little or no time for a small trader to prepare himself for the changes that will now be necessary in the accounting and the filing of returns. You know, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that a one simple business operating in only one state will now have to file 37 tax filings. If you have offices in three states, it's 111 tax forms. What is going on in this country? I mean, you know, this is the minister who told us that he was opposed to tax terrorism. Instead, what we are seeing is tax form terrorism. We are seeing something which obviously is going to cause a whole amount of problems. Increasing work for everybody involved in business. You know, we have been complaining for some time that this country, this government is not creating jobs. It seems that through GST they are creating jobs only for accountants, tax experts. This is what they have done to create a job. Because now the mom and pop stores, the Kirana Dukandar, has to find a chartered accountant to be able to fill his GST forms. I do want to say, Mr. Chairman, Minister, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that there is a particular problem when it relates to Jammu and Kashmir. It is a very sensitive state. It has been beset by terrorism, by violence. It has very many security issues. Its principal revenue generation was through tourism, which has been affected by terrorism. We need to do everything we can as a parliament to protect the fragile economy of Jammu and Kashmir. We have to make sure that this economy undermined by terror is not undermined by the finance ministry's terrorism. We must say the horticulture and handicraft sector, the tourism sector requires help. The 28% GST now is going to affect all of the tourism in Jammu and Kashmir. The adventure camp operators, houseboat, houseboat owners have already protested. If this is not rolled back, it is likely to make Kashmir, and indeed it's already making parts of India, my state Kerala has become uncompetitive in tourism because the tax rate is driving up the cost beyond any of our neighboring states. Frankly, tourists are looking at these numbers and saying, let's go to Sri Lanka. The air ticket may cost a little more, but the facilities are better and the tax is lower. 
Kashmir cannot afford that kind of crisis today when, when, when we have a serious problem in Jammu and Kashmir. And on top of that, a country like Singapore has demonstrated that with one flat rate of 7%, they're able to tax all goods equally. India, the Congress party had argued, should have a cap of 18%. They were not able to agree to a cap, and now we are seeing the consequences of this. An economy that loses a large chunk of its activity to constant turmoil in Kashmir is now going to be burdened by the center's over-enthusiastic experiments. Two minutes, Mr. Deputy Speaker, just two points. I'm the lead speaker for my party on this. I want to stress it's undoubtedly a relief that the farago of central taxes, state sales taxes, octroi and so on, has been abolished and replaced by GST. But this much of complexity means it is likely to lead to evasion, to arbitrage, and even to bribery of tax officials. Rent-seeking behavior from bureaucrats in the tax business is well known, and I fear it's going to get worse. There are other problems. Right now, I've been approached by people building a highway in my state saying that highway construction, they had all bid for their tenders on the basis of the 4 or 5 percent VAT that was applied. There was no service tax on highway construction. Suddenly GST has been applied at 12 percent. Our highway construction is going to, going to grind to a halt. Absolutely, all roads. And in fact, today I was, I was, I was uh, uh, having a, a meeting on our border infrastructure. They're really worried. They're now having to delay tenders till after July 1st so that the GST can be added to the cost of roads. A place like Jammu and Kashmir, we should not be uh, undermining in this irresponsible way. I do want to stress finally that there is also a great threat of litigation coming up, a flood of litigation about which tax brackets which companies fall into and how their goods should be categorized. Even before the GST was rolled out, we all know the Indian judicial system was choked by indirect tax cases. Uh, just tax appeals had tied down something like 1.4 lakh crores in revenue. Now on top of that, a judicial system that's so backlogged, 24 million cases pending as we've heard during question hour, more tax related last lawsuits are the last Sorry. thing the country needs. So let me stress Mr. Deputy Speaker, I can see you're about to reach for the bell, I'll just only take one minute. The BJP government has increased so many taxes and has raised the cost of so many goods for GST. I want to remind them of the National Institute of Public Finance and Policy's warning that if the GST amounted, as they calculated, to as much as 27% to prevent revenue loss, then far from reviving the economy, such a rate would cripple it. <coughs> this is the risk we are all facing in this country. The current government's version of the GST, I am sorry, would have a negative effect on, D on GDP instead of a positive one, and it would actually fulfill the warnings of the National Institute of Public Policy. Let me repeat, coming back to Jammu and Kashmir, that the state government passed the state law when it met the stiff opposition, widespread protests, boycott of the assembly by the opposition on this issue, and the parliament today must contemplate the impact of GST on the center's relations with JFK before we take the major mistake of passing this bill without adequate consultation with stakeholders. For this reason, Mr. Deputy Speaker, my party cannot support this bill. Thank you.